I'm not really sure if this is going to be a separate video, just depends, or it might be a tag on to what you just saw on my profile. Well, let's see what happens. Fluff, take it away. Hey, what's going on, people? Um, kind of going over the Shinron deck list that I ended up playing with Bancroft. Um, here you can see the deck list that we played. Uh, so just talking about the leader real quick, the leader is actually really awesome. On the front side, the leader can tap itself to add up to two Dragon Balls cards from your deck and or life to your hand, then shuffle any areas you look through with the skill. Um, so ideally, we play six uh, crack Dragon Balls. These are pretty kind of... They, they are what they need to be for the deck. If your leader card is a red Shadow Dragon card, draw one and add this card to your Z energy from your draw. So we do play six of those because we need six in the deck. Uh, the leaders awaken uh, when your life is at four or less, or you have six or more Z energy, switch this card and one of your energy to active mode. Uh, in the testing, I was able to awaken turn two both games, which is incredibly strong. Uh, backside of the leader is pretty simple. When it attacks, draw one, and then activate main once per turn. Choose one of your Shadow Dragon battle cards and up to one of your battle cards or unisons. The chosen cards get minus 15,000 power for the turn. It actually comes up quite a bit, oh, quite a bit more than I thought maybe that it would. Um, so that's the leader. Uh, going over the main chunks of the deck, the unison that we're playing is the SS4 Gogeta. On play, he scries the top three, and you get to add any one red card among them to your hand. On plus two, activate main, you get to play one battle card, one red battle card with energy cost one from your hand in rest mode. I think I was playing them in active mode. And the... Uh, in the in the match, but it didn't matter. I wasn't comboing them off or anything like that, or swinging with them. And then minus four, activate battle. This card gets plus 15,000 power and double strike for the turn. That never came up. Bancroft was pretty um, pretty aggressive about trying to keep this unison down and off the field generally. Going into the battle cards that we run, kind of our one-drop trio here. Uh, first off, we've got Oceanus. When she's played, you get to draw one card, place up to one crack Dragon Ball from your deck into your Z energy, then shuffle your deck. And then activate main if your leader is a shadow dragon, a red shadow dragon card. Your opponent has three or more energy, and you place this card from hand or battle area and drop. Choose one red shadow dragon card in your battle area, gains barrier until the end of your opponent's next turn. Um, one thing that I want to kind of touch on with this, these become one drops because of their permanent effects. But I found that it was actually general to just play these guys and just do the draw one. Don't add the cracked Dragon Ball card from your deck to your Z energy <clears throat> because you're actually missing out on an extra card in your hand if you do that. Now, say you open one ball in your hand, you find two, then you find two, and you still need to get your six and you need to go on ahead and awaken. Then I would go ahead and play one of these to get the cracked in. But if you open with like zero or two cards, I wouldn't even worry about the second part of this guy's effect. Kind of the twin to that card is going to be the Haze Shinron Gathering Evil. It's exactly the same. Its power is reduced by one because we have a red Shadow Dragon for leader. And then when it's played, you draw one, place up to one crack ball from your deck to your Z energy, then shuffle your deck. This one is different. It's got an activate battle in which you choose one of your Shadow Dragon cards and it gains crit for the turn by sending this card from the drop area to the drop area from your hand or battle area. This actually came up once or twice, I think. Um, absolutely amazing. Like if you're swinging with your uh, dual or double strike Sin Shenron or your triple strike Omega Shenron, being able to just instantly give those guys crit is huge in the activate battle. Um, <clears throat> the last kind of one drop that we run is the, the Super Nature on Shenron Regretting Evil. Uh, if your leader is a Shadow Dragon card when this card is played, look at five cards from the top of your deck, add up to one red Shadow Dragon card with an energy cost of four or less, or one red unison with specified cost of two among them to your hand and shuffle your deck. I didn't play this guy a lot, and I, I got to imagine that this guy is going to end up getting cut for other tech that the deck needs. I didn't find that he was super useful. He's only a 9,000 battle, and I just pretty much charged him at any point. I was running him at a 4 of, but if I saw him, he pretty much went into the energy instantaneously. Then next, we've kind of got the 15k bros. 
This includes the Nova Shenron and Ice Shenron. So going over Nova first, if your opponent has two or more energy when this card is placed in a drop area from a battle area by one of your skills, play this card from your drop, then draw one card. Activate main for one red energy. If your leader is a Z leader or you have six or more Z energy, play this card from your hand. So it's a one cost 15,000 that is going to let you swing, pop with leader effect, and then play it again and draw one card. The ice is exactly the same thing, except instead of drawing a card, he gains crit when he's played back to the field. So we're playing three of each of these. Generally, you're only going to resolve these effects two or three times over the course of a game. Your opponent is probably going to snipe these guys off the field pretty fast. It's pretty easy to get rid of two drops without any type of protection on them. So don't expect these guys to stick around. But if you can get them to go off, it is really good. And then, of course, we did talk about the Crack Dragon Balls. We do play that at a 6 of. Looking at the Sen Shenron Dread Shore, we play this guy at a 4 of. He's a 4-drop 20,000 double strike. Auto, choose one of your other Shadow Dragon cards and KO it. When this card attacks, choose one of your battle cards or unison cards. It gets minus 20,000 for the turn. And then we're playing this guy by its activate main limit one for one red energy. If the leader card is a red shadow dragon card and your leader is Z or you have six or more Z energy, draw one card and then play this card from your hand. So again, one energy to put out a 20,000 double strike is just ridiculously strong. And then you're able to snipe out something that's got 20,000 power on the field. Seems pretty good to me. And it worked wonderfully in testing. Kind of our big boy, our big bomb, is going to be the Omega Shenron Unfeeling Retribution. This is an 8-drop specified 4, 30,000 deflect triple strike. Permanent when this card's power would be reduced, it gets plus 5,000 for the, till the start of the next turn instead. If this happens, negate the skill until the start of the next turn. Activate main limit 1 for 2 red energy. If your leader card is a Shadow Dragon card or red Z leader and you have 3 or more energy, play this card from your, uh, from your hand. Activate battle once per turn. Choose up to one battle card or unison. It gets minus 3,000 power for the turn for each of your Z energy. Additionally, if your leader is a Z leader, choose up to one battle card or unison, and it gets minus 30,000 power for the turn. Um, so being able to just throw this guy out for two energy is absolutely huge. Um, I found he was great at sniping out unisons. You know, if, if your opponent played a two drop 15,000 and they just plus one swing into the unison, they're either going to burn and negate on it or they just lose their unison. It comes out early enough that that feels good to do. So we run three of those. Um, kind of moving on to techie stuff. I chose to test the minus energy power balls. It was kind of a toss up between this or violent rays. I think Violent Rays is probably overall a little bit better because it completely eliminates the option of your opponent being able to continue swinging. But Minus Energy Powerball chooses all of your opponent's battle cards and they lose 10,000 power for the turn. So if they have a field of 20,000s or 15,000s, that turns that into a field of 5,000s or 10,000s, <clears throat> which makes your opponent waste resources if they want to continue to pressure your leader with the cards currently on field. I played three of these and... They actually did pretty good in testing. Uh, super combos were on four Raditz because we like the we like the consistency multiplier of the deck. We run two testing the opposition. This is just for late game defense, preventing ourselves from dying at any given point. We run three Yamcha versus Barrage because we are kind of unison heavy. So we do want the ability to be able to neg out cards that are coming in and make them non-threats. I do play one King Piccolo, the new ruler. The one match that I saw this, it ended up getting discarded by the opponent's effect. Uh, it was just kind of the best card in my hand to discard at that point. But it would, but it's a great pressure piece for trying to close out the game. Uh, one of the games that I tried to close out, I think I ended up swinging like four times with triple strikes over the course of the turn. It was absolutely disgusting, and just adding a Piccolo on there would have would have sufficed just as well. Then at a two of, we run the Vegeta Resolve Renewed. One of the things that we don't want to happen is we don't want to go under a, a floodgate, so we want to have the Vegeta Resolve Renewed. These didn't come up in the testing. Bancroft was running floodgates, but he never actually played them, so I ended up discarding them a lot before I realized that 
it was in fact running floodgates and i was like oh no i've been discarding these cards for effects so don't do that secret rare is going to be ss blue vegeta uh, this card is fantastic for closing out the game. If you can whittle your opponent down to one life, they feel safe going for it. They're not expecting this guy. You just plop it down and instantly win the game. Otherwise, he can triple strike, blow up the field, and then just crit a life for the additional pressure. We do run three Dragon Thunder. I know a lot of people have kind of settled on two for this. I really like Dragon Thunder at a three of. It's kind of a faux Sensu Bean. You don't really get the energy back. And you don't ever really pay for this card's effect. You wait until you have your three energy in rest mode and then activate this guy. But if you've got to send Shenron on field, he's a 20,000. You Dragon Thunder on him and then Z-Awaken. You can play our next card, which is Heartfelt Plea. We are playing this at a one of. You can only play it at a one of because it is limited. Uh, but it basically comes in offering triple strike 30,000. There's nothing bad about that. And it has been ruled that you can, because it's Awakened Skills, so it's been ruled that Z Awakens satisfies that condition for the Heartfelt Plea. So that's the main deck. Looking at the Z deck, the, really the only card that matters is the Omega Shenron Merciless Negativity. You only need one of these guys, but Z Awaken when your life is three or less and your opponent has three or more energy on top of a red send Shenron, and then auto when this card attacks, draw one. Activate main once per turn. Choose one of your Shadow Dragon battle cards and up to one battle card or unison card. The chosen cards get minus 20,000 for the turn. Additionally, you may remove six Dragon Ball cards in your drop area from the game if you do play up to one sh red Shadow Dragon card from your hand. Um, this is 7Z energy to play, which six of your 7Z energy are going to come from your cracked balls. So you only have to commit one more card to your Z energy to be able to play this guy. And it's also worth noting that the Crack Dragon Balls cannot pay for Z cards um, unless they are for a Shadow Dragon Z energy cost. And right now, this is the only one that we have access to. I did run Vegeta's, but they never came up. I never wanted to spend the energy on this guy. I never wanted to spend the Z energy on this guy. So I'm not even really going to talk about it. That pretty much wraps up the deck. I'm absolutely loving this deck at this point. There's a couple switches that I'm going to make, but if you guys want to start toying around with the deck, this is what I'm currently toying around with. As always, read your cards, know your plays, let us make the mistakes so that you don't have to, and fluff out.